We'll start with Greg Logan in the front. Kevin, I know it's a, a new year, but I was wondering if you could reflect a little bit on uh, what it did for you to perform the way you did in the Olympics and the playoffs and, and what that does for your confidence about where you're at going into this season. Um, yeah, I mean, I was expecting to, to do, do the things that I did, um, which was just to focus in every day and, and continue to be a student of the game when I'm out there. So I, I was expecting that out of myself, the results that come from that. It is what it is. Um, I'm not too excited about it or, you know, it is what it is. <clears throat> I felt confident to, that I was going to go out there and, and um, help the team as much as I could once I played. Uh, but it was it was even better to get a year of, you know, just get more comfortable here in Brooklyn, uh, in the Barclays with my teammates, with the organization. It was good to get that under a year under the belt of actually being around the team. And, um, you know, we having some continuity coming into this season is always good for a basketball team. So we're looking forward to training camp and starting off this journey there. Brian Lewis, New York Post. Hey, Kevin, good to see you back here. Um, I'm just curious for those of us that, you know, obviously weren't in Tokyo, we didn't get a chance to talk to you about the extension. Could you just talk about uh, signing it and what made you sign it, I guess, at the time that you did and um, kind of committing your future long term here? And do you think that'll have any impact on, you know, getting your friends James and Kyrie to sign here and commit here long term as well? Yeah, I just wanted to be here and I thought it was a perfect timing for me to do so. And um, uh, we all three talked about playing together for a long time, but their situation is going to happen on their time and when they want it to happen. Um, and we all respect that. So, but it was, it was good to get it done and commit to the team and the organization and my teammates and, you know, we continue to keep working from here. Bruce Beck, NBC New York. Kevin, would anything short of winning an NBA championship for this team be a disappointment to you this year? Nah, I mean, we want to win. I mean, I don't, I don't like that type of question. I mean, we want to win and the journey is incredible. It's always fun to go through another season and do something that we love to do every day. And of course we hate losing. We don't want to, no team wants to lose, but there's still some good things you can pull from a season, you know, um, regardless of the outcome. And I think that's always been the approach that I had, but winning is always a top priority. The uh, gentleman with his hand raised in the back. Yes, excuse me. Hi, Kevin. Could I borrow your notebook? I didn't bring. Thank you. Uh, 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 Dave from uh, Basketball Digest. Kevin, uh, uh, KD, why, why do people call you KD? Um, Can I call you KD? Or? Yeah. Okay. My, my first name is Kevin. Uh -huh, right. And my second name, my right, last right name, down. my second name. My last name is Durant with a D. KD? Uh, this year, how, what percentage do you plan on giving on the court? 90, 95, 100, 110? What are we looking at? Uh, 110. 110. 110. Uh, I just got off the phone with the Dolan family, and they said that they're talking to the commissioner now. They're looking at working a contractual deal that will allow you, uh, when you're not playing for the Nets, days off, you'll be able to play for the Knicks. Comments? All right, Dave, that was the last one. Co I'm sorry, was that a comment? Co that was it. How about you? Do you have a comment? Wrap it up. Okay. Uh, I'm being told my time is done. Have a, have a great uh, year. Thanks. What about the Pelicans? When you guys play the Pelicans, does it kind of make you giggle? <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right, that's all I got. That's it, everybody. Thank you. Good night. Okay. Good job, Dave. I have to go make some calls now. Tough act to follow. We'll go to Brian Mahoney, Associated Press. You let anybody in here. Hey, I heard that. <laughs> I don't know how to follow that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Kevin, a, a lot of people 
you know, going to last year, you had a major injury. People weren't quite sure where you would be. Uh, now people say you're the best player in the league again already. Um, you know, with a regular, you know, time to actually play basketball over the summer, where do you expect to be, you know, by the end of this season now? I mean, I, I don't want to predict. I don't know. I mean, I mean, keep keep getting better. I mean, you guys have been seeing me for 15 years. Um I mean, so you probably probably can project where I'll be at the end of the season, you know. So I don't think we need to do that with my game anymore. It is what it is. And, um, you know, I just want to be available for my team every night. Tina Servacio, Fox 5. Hey, Kevin, good to see you. So when you look at what Sean Marks did over the offseason, whether it's bringing back LaMarcus Aldridge from retirement or, uh, you know, resigning Blake Griffin as well as your – extension what are your thoughts on this this roster and how does it play into your goals of course of winning the championship yeah i like the roster um you know we like the guys that we put together a lot of veteran guys mixed in with a couple young guys that are hungry for this experience in the nba and then we got veteran guys who've been through a lot as well so and also having some returning players helps um so we want to keep keep building this um culture and keep fine tuning who we are as a team every single day and see who we are at the end of the season. But um, what we have on paper is cool, but we gotta, we still gotta get out in between the lines and play. Gerard Hector, True Hoop. Hey, Kevin, I wanna take you away from basketball for a bit. The last few months, we've had a lot of rollouts of music. Drake certified lover boy, Kanye's Donda. Kendrick's dropped something, Lil Nas X. How do you feel about how these artists now are releasing their music and the way they're promoting albums these days? Yeah, I love it. I love it. I feel like they have to have more control over their art. Um, and, you know, that's, as an artist, that's really what you want. And so you're seeing a lot of these guys just create moments around their albums. And it's a great time for music, great time for sports. And, you know, it feels like everything is, you know, playing, playing off of each other. So, you know, uh, it's been a great summer for music. Brian Windhorst, ESPN. Hello, Kevin. Um, Kyrie is not here today. There's this law here in New York um, with health and safety <coughs> protocols. Are you concerned about his availability at home games going forward? No. So you expect that not to be an issue? I expect it not to be. I don't mean, I'm, that's, that's on Kyrie and that's his personal decision. What he does is not on us to speculate what, what may happen, but we trust in Kyrie and I expect us to have our whole team at some point. Alex Schiffer, The Athletic. Hey, Kevin. Sean said when LaMarcus first called him about coming back, you know, he tried to initially talk him out of it and he said he didn't need to do this. I'm just curious what your conversations were like with him when he was thinking about a comeback and, and his talk about there being unfinished business. Uh, yeah, I mean, I was, you know, supported LaMarcus and whatever he wanted to do. And I trust every trust his judgment on his on his life, you know? So if he, I'm sure he went through uh, every checkup, you know, to make sure he's, he's right to play. And it was great to see him in the locker room. It was great to have him back. And, you know, we love having him around last year for those couple of weeks. And um, he felt like this was a great environment as well. So it's good to, to, to get him back and uh, have him playing again. I, he was like 49 points away from 20,000. And I was like, shit, you know? I want him to get that, you know, so for him to be back with us uh, and probably hit that mark pretty early in the season, I'm looking forward to being a part of that with him. And so good to see him playing again. He, I know how much I was known LaMarcus for a long time and he loves to play, he loves to be around the guys and I'm excited for him. Scooby Axon, USA Today. Another question away from the season. Um, it's been 10 years since you uh, showed up at Rucker Park and just obliterated everyone. Uh, what are your memories of that? And of course, the Players Union is now renovating Rucker Park. Can you tell me what's that going to mean to the NBA and the kids around that neighborhood? Yeah, that's a special place, a historic place. You know, a lot of great players who've um, played in the NBA and who haven't played in the NBA. Streetball legends have graced that court. And uh, it's good that they're renovating it and, 
refurbishing it and trying to keep that legacy alive. It's meant so much to the basketball community, especially here in New York and not just in New York, around the world, you know, that's a, that's a huge name, you know, Rucker Park and so many great memories. So um, I'm excited that, that the uh, NBA, MBPA is doing that and uh, looking forward to seeing how it finishes. Lisa Shu, Tencent. Hi, Kevin, you used to say, I'm so tired of being number two. And now like, it seems like more and more people realize or saying that you're the best player of the world. So do you feel like, okay, finally people realize who I am, I'm Kevin Durant? I mean, a lot of people, I said that one time in an interview and, uh, 10 years ago, a lot of people make it seem like I've been saying that over and over again that I don't want to be second. I literally said it once. And it really wasn't about me being the best player. It was about us winning the championship because we had lost that year. So I wanted to win the championship. So me being the best player, like you said, just last year, people were questioning if I can actually play again. And now this year, people are calling me the best. Like those opinions really don't matter. It's just everybody's fickle when it comes to that stuff. So I know what I bring to the table. My teammates and coaches know what I bring. And the true fans that love the game, that genuinely love the game, understands. Um, my what I carved out in the league, so that's cool enough for me. Justin Walters picks eleven. All right, Kevin. When you KD, or pardon, when you James and Kyrie came together, sacrifices were expected. Although you guys only played less than a dozen games together in the regular season last year, was anything that surprised you about the continuity from last year that will help you guys gel together better this year? I don't think everybody's just more comfortable in this environment. Um, you know, uh, we've been through a season together, even though we were injured, we still traveled together, practice, you know, we're around each other every day. So that stuff is good. Walking into another season, just familiar with the faces in the locker room and the coaching staff. And, um, but at, we're, we all been experienced in this league and we've been through every type of game. So, you know, the IQ is uh, is pretty high with this group, and it's just a matter of us actually getting reps in, and we're looking forward to that. So I think we got a lot of boxes checked, but once the, once we get on the court, I think that's the final one. Next question comes from Zoom, Christian Winfield, New York Daily News. Hey, Kevin, what's going on? How you doing? Where you at? I'm at, I'm at the crib. All right. Yeah, got to get my status. I'll be back, though, don't worry. Um, just real quick, you know, last year, if that two is a three, there's a good chance that you guys are NBA champions now. I think that's that's fair to say. Um, when when you're that close to winning a championship in a way, do you feel like there are like actual tangible things that you guys need to improve on year over year or since you guys still have the same core? Or do you think that you guys are a championship team like you guys may have been last year? Hold up. We, I mean, we, we lost in the second round. I mean, like, I had to play every minute for three straight games. I mean, if you think I was going to do that for the next two rounds and win the championship, I mean, shit. No, I mean, if, you, if I can just explain real quick, I mean, if, if you guys go to the next round, that gives James more time to get healthy, right? He was playing on one leg. Kyrie may or may not come back. When you think about a hamstring, like, I don't think those get better if you play on them, you know what I'm saying? So... I mean, I don't know. I mean, we can we can we can have this conversation if we want, but I feel like um, we uh, we put ourselves in a position um, to win um, in that second round. But I think our experience of going through a tough seven, grueling seven game series is going to help us out um, as far as knowing what it takes, um, you know, and and what those games look like coming down to the wire. Uh, winning on the road in a tough, tough environment against the champs. It felt like a championship series playing against the guys that won it. Uh, so, you know, I think that that series was good for us as a whole to know who we are as a team and see what we got to continue to keep getting better and we can go from there. But I wasn't, I'm not going to say we was going to easily win the championship after, if we'd have won that game. 